no, but the kind of the dust has settled down. You've had a chance to think back and look back at the the game against England last weekend. What are the sort of the key things you take out of it that you can learn from in terms of moving forward? Yeah, we, we we've taken a lot out of the game. I think um, <clears throat> we got a lot of things right. Um, we got a few things. You know, we, we were sloppy in some areas, um, which we've looked at and. Um, you know, you learn a lot in, in showing what we showed, which was a lot of character to, to, to sort of stay in the fight and stay in the moment and, and make sure we were able to, you know, bounce back from a lot of setbacks and a lot of, you know, things that weren't going our way and, and still be able to recover. So we learned a lot that, you know, if, if we can get out of that situation, it'll stand to us in the future as well. Um, but yeah, there's lots of learnings on the other side of it. You know, we need to be, we need to be more accurate. We need to be better disciplined. Um, yeah, they were they were the main things really. When you look at the third quarter of the game, uh, do you look back at that now and say, you know, we could have been better? Or are you happy with the way that you um, dealt with it at the time and moved on? Oh yeah, of course. That that's the period where you know, especially at the start of the second half, we we showed some great bit of play and we we didn't take our the couple of ch clear chances that we had to, to go and score the try. Um, they stay in there. In fairness to them, their their defense was so um, they worked so hard. You know, obviously with fourteen men, but they they were they were in the fight the whole time, and and uh, we just we weren't clinical enough to take that chance. And again, if you take that chance at at fifteen nine up, you know, we can it can be a huge sort of turning point in the game because you know then they have to to play a little bit more and and it can take its toll. So look, we we need to be more accurate across the board. But that that period especially was one that we've looked at a lot. And just a word about Scotland, what you expect from them. I mean, in terms of silverware, they're not going to go on and win a title or be in a chance to, uh, to, to win the title. You've had a good record against them in the last while, but they're just one of the most dangerous teams uh, if you underestimate them. Well, we definitely won't be underestimating them. We, we know some of the big results that they've had over the last couple of years is away from home. Um, you know, I suppose they, they hadn't a good record away from home. And then in the last couple of years, they've beaten France, they've beaten England, um, Wales as well. And did they beat Wales in Parky Scarlet? Anyway, um, they've, they've had some big scalps away from home. And um, yeah, they're, they're a team to be to reckon with. I know they've no, they've no championship to play for, but that's when they can be the most dangerous. They they can't you know because they've they've got nothing to lose. Um, they want to finish as high up the table as possible. But also any any time you play a game, whether it's a November international, a summer international, you know Six Nations game that doesn't have something riding on, it's very special. It's a, you're still playing for your country. You're still representing a lot, and um, you know we're we're preparing for for their best performance, and they've got some outstanding individuals. in 2010 against Scotland is that so far in the past that there are no lessons to be learned or can you look back at that and take something out of it as in expected to win a home match and Scotland come up and, uh, and got the job done on the day yeah I think I'm the only sole survivor from that day um, but yeah the, the scars uh, still still with me um, yeah, look, Scott. That's that, that's exactly the the message. You know, you're trying to get across to the lads. We, we, you know, they had nothing to play for that day. We had a triple crown on the line, and they came and did a job. And they they had nothing to lose, and they played brilliant rugby. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a bad day. Um, you know, to, to have a packed out Crow Park, um, and, and we we got nothing out of the game. So it's uh, yeah, they're the the things that. You, the benefit of having experience is you got someone like that to try and explain to the lads. We need to get our preparation spot on, and, and we're, we've got obviously, um, you know, very good coaches with with focusing on the process and, and making sure we get our jobs right. So um, I'm not sure too many of the lads will remember 2010, but I I definitely will. Do you have anything specific from that time that you identified maybe in the immediate aftermath of, of why it went wrong for you that day or anything in the build-up you remember that you can use as, as an example when you're talking to the lads this week? Um, yeah, we didn't. Probably, probably didn't add our preparation. Um, even the night before the game, I remember a couple of things happening that were a bit a bit, uh, bit off. Um, and yeah, we didn't get it right. And yeah, like I said... Um, Why me asking you what were they, Johnny? Um, <laughs> yeah, like uh, just... The things that you would normally do the night before a game, we, we veered away from that. We we did try to do something new, but um, 
you know, it, it, that's in hindsight. You know, if we'd gone and played brilliantly, we would have said, oh, we should do that before every game. So it's it's it wasn't the overriding factor. The overriding factor was Scotland played better on the day and, um, you know, we weren't quite at the level we should have been. So the most important thing is when you, if you come away from a game, <clears throat> at least if you've given your, your best and your best performance, if you've lost, you just hold your hands up and say, fair play to Scotland, they they beat us. And, um, you know, that's what we have to focus on this week is getting our best performance out there. And if, if we lose, we lose. But, um, you know, hopefully that won't be the case. Very good. And just in the background, is there anyone running a book on Cheltenham there? Or how many guys are interested in it? Or what's happening there with that? Yeah, there's a, there's a few good few lads. Uh, there's tip sheets up on the walls, and there's the Willie Bennett's leading the charge, uh, our, our masseuse, and uh, yeah, it's, obviously it's a it's a big week in in that regard as well for the lads. They love it. Uh, I think most Irish people do. Um, so uh, yeah, they'll enjoy it. You throw a few quid down. Um, I don't myself. I'm I'm not I'm not good with the horses. Um, so I, I stay away from it.